Israel's withdrawal from Lebanon on May 24, 2000, in compliance with UN Resolution 425, marked Israel's desire for normalization with Lebanon and the hopes for a new Middle East. Unfortunately, the Lebanese government, enforced by the Syrian regime control, decided to allow a global Shiite terrorist organization in its deplorable act, backed by Iran, to take control and fortify itself along the international borderline. Ever since Hezbollah overtook control of South Lebanon, it turned the international borderline between Israel and Lebanon into a war zone, kidnapping and killing border patrols, attempting to draw Israel's response. On July 12th, Hezbollah terrorists infiltrated into Israel territory and attacked two IDF armored jeeps patrolling the border with Lebanon, killing three soldiers and kidnapping two. IDF ground forces entered Lebanon in the area of the attack. Simultaneously, Hezbollah initiated an onslaught of missile attacks throughout one-third of the length of Israel, of holy sites along the Sea of Galilee and many more Jewish, Muslim, and Baha'i shrines, launching thousands of rockets, wounding and killing thousands of civilians. The Katyusha missiles land next to you, almost everywhere. It's like in the movies. The Katyusha flew over me. I thought it was a black dove. Suddenly I heard a shriek, and that was it. Whoever wants to stay alive should stay under shelter. We've been living here in this shelter for the past 19 days. We get up in the morning, we run home for a short while, but we're even afraid to shower from fear of a sudden bombing, and we quickly return to the shelter. We run from our home to the shelter every five minutes. We all sleep together, play together. I keep searching to see where my kids are. My family's in Lebanon. My son, too. Israelis living in the north of Israel struggle to survive under the constant fire of shells at their homes. Most residents fled to temporary refugee camps set up in the south of the country. You sleep in a tent with 300 people, you feel like a refugee. Everyone here is a refugee. I am from Tiberias. I left Sderot due to the Qassam shells shot at us from Gaza. I didn't have the time to get organized and suddenly a rain of Katyushas hit us. I said to myself, that's it. Tiberias is being hit. It came as a shock. We're in a boom, just like a Katyusha, as they say. Nothing is safe anymore. Nothing. A uh, Katyusha landed in the middle of our street. I went into shock from the blast. The boom and the shriek, it was distressing. From that day onwards, I took off and came here. To hear of all the soldiers and the dead, to think of them fighting in Lebanon, it's really difficult. To watch television and see them fight for our well-being, Haifa, Israel's third largest city and a symbol to Arab-Israeli coexistence, was targeted for the first time and citizens who never felt the threat of war suddenly found themselves under the line of fire, sharing the anxiety and fear of the missile attacks. I tuned the radio in order to listen to where the missiles landed. And then the missile hit me. What can I tell you? I was totally helpless. I never felt anything like that before. I was sure it was the end of the world that I'd been there and come back. I always said it was one in a million chance for it to hit me. There are better chances winning the lottery and then I was hit. This hospital is under fire. Russians, Arabs, Jews, Israelis, a very varied team of people. And the beauty of it, that we are all working together to serve the same purpose. The Katyusha rocket is fired at you. And you know, it, it lands on your father and your mother. And the whole state of Israel sits on your shoulder. Because we, we must put a stop to it. My feeling is like I am protecting my home. I arrived to this scene with two teams. This whole place was in flames. You can see the holes in the gas tanks made by the shrapnel. 
In the Upper Galilee, we have been bombed with over a hundred Kichushas per day. The scenes are painful and shocking. People are confused, bleeding, panicking, anxiety wherever you go. No one can say it's not frightening. The missiles they launch have no specific address. It does not differentiate a Jew from an Arab. It bombs the Jewish and the non-Jewish homes. Throughout this period, the Israeli Defense Forces have been trying to put a stop to these attacks and try to bring to the return of the two kidnapped soldiers. There are no winners in the war. We are our losers. I wish for there to be peace in the Middle East. I hope the next generation will not hear the word combat. May we return home safely. As Gandhi once said, there is no path for peace. Peace is the path. Israel was established as a pluralistic democratic state based on freedom, justice, and peace for all its citizens, irrespective of religion, race, or sex. Israelis today wish for an end to violence and call for a new Middle East free of terror and hostility.